Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Movie Melee. We got an exciting match for you today here in the Movie uh, Melee Trios Tournament. Uh, it's a really exciting one today because we have uh, the number four seed, Grumpy Old Men, which is uh, the team of uh, Brian Michaels, Jeremy Adams, and Tony Durso going up against the number 13 seed, The Brethren Court, which is Jake Meltzer, Caleb Coho, and Joe Fairley. Uh, fascinating combination of players here. I'm really excited. I think this is a match that we could potentially see uh, go all the way down to the wire. I think these are two of like, the scariest teams on paper that we've seen. Uh, when you look at like the pedigree of all the individual players, it'll be interesting to see how they all mesh together. Joining me on the desk today is one Mark Menchaca. Mark, what are your thoughts on the match we have before us today? Uh, no, you know, it should be interesting. This is um, maybe this is kind of what we were hoping for when setting up this tournament. We got a bunch of people on teams I think we never thought we'd see on a team together. And honestly, here we got some real heavy hitters here. You know, this should be very interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, just jump right into pre-match interviews, starting with uh, our technical uh, lower-seeded team. It is Brethren Court. We have uh, Joe Fairley, Caleb Coho, and Jake Meltzer. Uh, guys, uh, tough task ahead of you today. Obviously, you're going up against three juggernauts, but you guys are all very good players in your own right, obviously. Uh, all of you have achieved uh, a lot in this in this league and just in multiplex in general, winning a bunch of belts. Uh, between the three of you. Uh, thoughts on your opponents and your chances today? Well, I guess so I'll go first. Pirate King, maybe. So you want the Pirate King to go first? Let's do it. Sure. This is the hard part about having like three managers working together on one team is we're all used <laughs> to like talking first and not knowing who should talk first in the situation. Uh, this is going to be exciting. Uh, when we all got like drawn together, I was like, this is actually a really well-rounded trio. Uh, having, you know, having Jake who just knows everything and like Joe, who's like super, super sneaky, good in melee, but also just has that entire wealth of phantom knowledge to use. Love the, I love the flexibility that this team has. So I'm excited to see what we can do. Um, and I'm excited that I didn't even have to suggest the team name. I was like, this is awesome. This is a better team. Name like, I could have come up with. That was all Jake. <laughs> and it, at world's ends in my letterbox Friday, last four watch. So, you know, that's great. <laughs> Yeah, I will say. So this is this is my first competitive match in over a year. So I'm definitely like kind of chomping at the bit to get at this. So I'm ready to go. Yeah. All right. Couldn't have put it, couldn't have put it better myself. I'm excited. First time I think I'm playing on a team with Coho, and first time in this universe that I'm playing on in a team universe. with Jake. So. Oh, yeah, I forgot that that happened. Well, <laughs> best of luck to you guys. Uh, we will now bring in your opponents for this evening. Uh, the number four seed, Grumpy Old Men, uh, Brian Michaels, Jeremy Adams, and Tony Durso. Uh, guys, I know when uh, you were announced as a team when we were doing the draft, the uh, randomized uh, teams, basically, uh, a lot of people were looking to you guys as essentially like the favorite to win this whole thing. So uh, a lot of pressure. Are you feeling it? And uh, thoughts on your opponent this evening? Opponents. <laughs> Uh, I'm just really excited to to be playing with some grumpy old men. I when I got these two guys uh, as a team, I just thought just playing with these these two guys is going to be incredible. Um, I never it just never occurred to me that one day I'd be playing with Brian Michaels. We were always just at odds for years and years, and it's and it's it's an awesome thing, and I'm really excited about it. I mean, I think I hosted one of Tony's early matches, and and I've just really been impressed with the guy ever since but you know it's you know you never want to be too hyped up that can always get in your head a little bit and we're playing guys that you know are really great players and you know i'm on in this position where i play players who are really good at fandom and you just that can go one way or the other you just never know uh yeah i i kind of just echo what, what jeremy said um you know I, I haven't played for quite a while now as far as competitive trivia um, getting to play with these two guys are great. You know, Jeremy, I've played against a lot. I haven't really played with him. Tony was kind of just coming into the league as I was kind of leaving. So I've I've seen him play and seen great things that he's done, but I haven't gotten to play with him or, or against him. Um, so that's a lot of fun. But the, the whole favorite thing, you know, I hate because it all depends on the yeah. chemistry of the team. And you got to, you know, you should compliment each other's strengths, things like that. And all they've done is put a target on her back by saying that. But, you know, it's going to be fun. I, I can't hate the the other team, you know, with you know, like the Brethren Court. I think they did that just to get my goodwill. Uh, this is what it is. Tony? Uh, I don't feel any pressure because mainly I'm going to do what anyone in my position would do. 
is ride the coattails of the two championship level <laughs> players all the way to victory. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, best of luck to you as well. We will now get into round number one, which will work like this. It is the standard wheel, uh, not wheel round, the standard whiteboard round. Uh, at each team will be asked eight questions in eight different categories of movie trivia, which they will answer individually on their whiteboards. If any individual player gets all eight questions right, they will be asked a bonus question. Each team has three repeats and one challenge to use for the entirety of the match. Uh, any questions before we get started? No. Good luck, guys. All right, so then your first question will come in the category of comedies. In what 2000s comedy will you find characters referred to as Tallahassee, Columbus, and Wichita? Which of these cities is your favorite, Mark? Uh, I don't know. Which one's more south? I guess Tallahassee. Yeah, mm. it's that one. Nice. I haven't There's been to any There's one third of, of a repeat. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Brian first. Zombie Land. And Koho? Uh, Zombie Land. And Jeremy? Zombie Land. Jeek? Zombie Land. Tony? Zombie Land. And Joe? Zombie Land. Zombieland is correct. Clean sweep. Okay. Moving on to your next question in the category of 2010s. Who plays the adult version of Bobby Fischer in Pawn Sacrifice? Yeah, I was going to say a couple things. I didn't. I wasn't sure if it gives things away, so I just mm. kind of stopped myself. Nice. And now, you know, we can just talk about how we almost. Gave away parts of the question. <laughs> we could. But I think we're just about out of time. Now we are. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Coho. Uh, Toby McGuire. And Jeremy? Toby McGuire. And Jake? Toby McGuire. Tony? Toby McGuire. Joe? Line four. And Brian. Toby McGuire. Toby McGuire is correct. So now Old Man takes the six to five lead. And your next question will come in the category of coming of age slash teen. Name one of the four main friends that set out on a journey to find a dead body in Stand By Me. And we do not need their full names. You ever seen a dead body? Oh, Mark. Plenty. Let me tell you. <laughs> Many a stories. Many a story. What about you? All right. Uh, you know, a few. Uh, yeah. I had one that was, you know, dead for like a minute. And then, like, oh, look, dead body. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Jeremy. Gordy. And uh, Jake. Vern and Tony. I said Dean and Joe. Michael and Brian. Gordy and Co. I need to. I said Bill and Josh. Uh, Gordy is correct. Uh, so and so is Vern. So we will take uh, Brian, Jeremy, and Jake. Uh, so the score is eight to six going into your next question. All right. And that will come in the category of Oscars. Who won Best Director twice in the 1980s? I forgot to mention the other two options were uh, Teddy and Chris for the last question. So there you oh, go. They didn't, they didn't know them. It doesn't matter. That's fine. <laughs> it doesn't exist. You know. You excited for the Oscars this year, Mark? Have we gone over this before? <laughs> Plenty of times. Five, four, three, repeat two, the two. All right. That is Brethren Court's first repeat. Mark? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Who won Best Director twice in the 1980s? Sometimes I just forget. Although this year, you know what? I'm really hoping my boy. 
finally gets his best director win. It'd be really nice. Yeah. I was yes. trying to I was trying to think of a joke for like misdirection of who your boy could probably be. I know who it is, but like couldn't think of anything. I'm really firing on all cylinders today. Five. Yeah, obviously. Four, three. I don't even want to say two, anything. Yeah, never mind. One. <laughs> Pens down. Uh we'll go to uh Jake. I'm gonna kick myself. I said James L. Brooks. And Tony? Same thing. Kick myself, James L. Brooks. <laughs> and Joe? Next season, add BAFTAs as a category. Uh, Steven Spielberg? And Brian? I don't know. I guess Richard Attenborough. And Coho. Mark's boy should have been Justine Triette. Uh, Oliver Stone. And Jeremy? Oliver Stone. <laughs> Oliver Stone is correct. Uh, so, what were the movies? Just out of curiosity. Platoon and Born on the Fourth of July. Born on the Fourth. Yes. <laughs> there you go. So your next question will come in the category of horror. How is Sergeant Neil Howie killed at the end of 1973's The Wicker Man? Two first names. Always go. Love the two first names guy. Yes. Neil or Howie, which would you rather be named? There's a partial uh, repeat for everyone. Probably Howie. I mean, you just want to yeah. be, yeah, it, is, it sounds sounds like a nice, uh, sound like an okay guy. You're a big deal or no deal guy? Five, four, three, <laughs> yeah. Also two, braided germs. One. Pens down. We'll go to Tony first. I said stung by bees because that's all I know about that movie. <laughs> and we'll go to Joe. Not the bees. Uh, burned, uh, burned to death. And Brian? Yeah, burned in a fire. Okay. And Coho? Yeah, burned a lot. Jeremy? Burned to death. Jake? I also said burned alive. Burned alive, burned to death, burned in a fire. We'll accept all of those. <laughs> <laughs> so the score Dang. now is 11 to 9 in brother, uh, an old men's favor. So it's, uh, it's 11 to 10? I thought yep. it was 10. I had 11, 11 to 10. 10. Sorry, I forgot to yeah. hit enter on the key there. Go ahead. All right. Your next question comes in the category of recent releases. What 2023 film features a cast that includes De John David Washington, Gemma Chan, and Allison Janney? So here's the boring explanation of what just happened. I used a spreadsheet to calculate all the scores for this, and I forgot to hit enter after I put in Jake's point for that question. So it hadn't calculated it yet. But now we're at 10. We're good. How are you today, Mark? Okay. Much more efficient than my whiteboard method. Where... The That's newest good. melee banter is just everything they're doing live. <laughs> three, two, one. That would take forever. Uh, pens down. <laughs> we'll go to Joe. Creator. And Brian? Super underrated. The creator. And Coho? I didn't know you used the spreadsheet to do this. Oh, the creator. And Jeremy? I blanked. I'm sorry. And Jake? For once, I agree on a movie with Brian, the creator. <laughs> and uh, Tony? The creator. The creator is correct. Uh, so with that, Brethren Court ties up the game, and there are no more perfect rounds. So your next question will come in the category of music. The Cameron Crowe film Singles centers around what specific genre of music? You know, it is funny somebody mentioned things happened in the background because one of the previous matches, uh, Jack and Dylan went off at a tangent and nobody knew what the hell they were talking about. <laughs> Something about like the Edmonton Oilers head coach. Yeah. And then, then Jack just started talking without explaining what was going on. Really. He got so excited. Can you really blame him? He loves the Oilers, that man. Five, I guess not. Four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Bryant first. Crunch. And Co. I said rock music. And Jeremy? Grunge rock. And uh, Jake? Grunge. And Tony? Grunge rock. And Joe. I had country. Uh, grunge or grunge rock is correct. Uh, we did say specific, so we were looking for more than just rock music. So unfortunately, we can't accept Coho's answer. 
Uh, so the score now is 16 to 14 as we get into your final question, Mark. It's coming in the category of scores and soundtracks. Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg recorded the title song for what 1992 crime film? Yeah, sure, that must have been a hell of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> Get those two heavy hitters on board. Oh, yeah. Are you a fan of these two? Uh, uh, not really. No. That's fair. <laughs> I don't listen That's to a lot of rap. That's fair. I saw one of these guys in concert. It was fun. Oh, okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Yes, Snoop Dogg is still doing concerts. Uh, we'll go to uh, Coho first. Uh, I broke cop that no blank words. And Jeremy? I drew a blank. I said juice. And Jake? I drew Jeremy's blank as well. I said juice. <laughs> and Tony? Deep cover. Oh, yeah. And Tony, or not uh, Tony? I just went to you, Joe. <laughs> I didn't even. I drew a blank and didn't even write juice. <laughs> and Brian, I wrote juice as well. Uh, deep cover is correct. Good job, Tony. Nice, Tony. Good job, Tony. Yeah. So with that, uh, the score that I have coming out of round number one, I have a grumpy old man in the lead, seventeen to fourteen. Is that what you have, Mark? That's what I got. All right, then we'll get into round number two, which will work like this. It is the wheel round, so each team will get the chance to spin the wheel, which will decide what category that they will be answering questions in tonight. If they don't like the category they spin first, they can choose to spin again, but they will be stuck with whatever they spin in that scenario. Uh, each question worth two points apiece, unless they check down a multiple choice, in which case it is worth one point. The categories on the wheel today are 20th century Spielberg, 1980s, 2010s fandom, recent releases, romantic comedies, musicals, mystery slash thriller, and horror. So, uh, Grumpy Old Man, since you are in the lead, would you like to spin first or defer to your opponents? Do you guys have a preference? No. no. What do you I, think, Brian? What do you, what do you usually do? I tend to go second just because then, if depending on how they do, we can decide if we need to go multiple choice or not. All right. Yeah, I'm good deferring. All right, we'll go second. All right. So then, Brethren, brethren Court, this will be your first spin. Joke's on you. Joe likes to go first. <laughs> Shit. So unfortunately, land on opponent's choice. So, uh, grumpy old man, which category would you like to give them? Well, we didn't discuss this. Um, <laughs> what are your feelings? Hang on, I'm gonna reach down, maximize my screen. I mean, I don't. I'm not sure what they're weak on. They're probably not bad on 80s. No, nothing. They're super weak on. I think. Um, I was gonna say I'm having trouble even reading the categories. Um, what do you think? Do you need okay. a repeat of them? Uh, I, I could use a repeat of the categories, if you don't okay. mind. Yeah, sure. Categories again. 20th Century Spielberg, 1980s, 2010s Fandom, Recent Releases, Romantic Comedies, Musicals, Mystery Thriller, and Horror. But do you think, like, maybe rom-coms are musicals, or do you just want to give them one of ours? Well, I don't know. Jake's kind of sneaky good in some of those. Um, okay. Uh, Let's be honest. Jake's gonna be good in all these categories. True, true. What um, do you think about like, like horror? Maybe. Uh, I I was gonna say I wouldn't do horror. I was thinking no. maybe rom. Mm. If you guys want to go for it, I, I'm. I, I think they're gonna do pretty good no matter what we give them. So yeah, I, not fandom. We'll say that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if you don't want fandom, <laughs> I was gonna say, what do you guys think of rom coms? You want your yeah, I mean, it's going to be that or Spielberg. The, the Spielberg questions will be deep, but they probably studied it. So I'm okay with rom-coms if rom -com. you guys want to do. Okay. All right. So then, uh, Mark, would you like to give them their questions in the category of romantic comedies? Sure, why the hell not? All right. Rather than court, these would be your questions. Romantic comedies. In what 60s romantic comedy does the main character save the love interest from a pill overdose? The apartment, right? The apartment. That's the apartment. Yeah, yeah gotta be. Yeah. Cool. If I go, just say it. Go for it. The apartment, final answer. It's correct for two points. If all three of us say it at the same time, this is probably a good, good yeah. shout. Yeah. <laughs> Your next question. In Silver Linings Playbook, Pat debates about wearing what to a dinner at his friend's house. The football jersey. Okay. I'm like, uh, 
I, I, to, to be fair, I've seen it once, but I'm pretty confident it's his Eagles jersey. So weirdly, I haven't seen it, and that's the first thing that came to my head as well. Yeah, I've only seen it. I've only seen it the one time at theaters. I'm cool going for it, honestly. Football jersey, final answer. I think that football jersey uh, that is correct for it. Good job. Next question. What 80s romantic comedy features performances from David Ogden Steers, Kim Darby, and Curtis Armstrong? Um, the only Curtis Armstrong movie I can think of is Risky Business, but that's not really a romantic comedy. I got nothing. I, I would go for multiple choice here. I agree. But yeah, multiple choice, please. Multiple choice options are A, Better Off Dead, B, Some Kind of Wonderful, C, Tootsie, or D, Can't Buy Me Love. I'm pretty sure it's Better Off Dead. Okay. That immediately stuck out to me. Sure. Better Off Dead, final answer. It's great for a point. Nice, Jake. Very nice. Your penalty question. In Just Friends, Chris injures himself while playing what sport? Hockey, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's hockey, specifically ice hockey. But yeah, hockey or ice hockey, final answer. Hockey is correct for two points. Yeah. Now I'm going to hear the final question of the category. Who plays bride to be Kimmy Wallace in My Best Friend's Wedding? Oh, it's uh, Cameron Diaz. Okay. She's the. The one who's yeah. getting married, Julia oh, Roberts. Yeah, okay. is the yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Cameron Diaz. So Cameron Diaz, final answer. That's correct for two more points. Cool. Good job, guys. All right. So then, coming out of that, that round, beautifully, guys. <laughs> so coming out of that round, I have Brethren Court now in the lead, twenty-four to seventeen. So this will be the we'll now bring back the wheel uh, for what will be Grumpy Old Men's first spin. They had 14 commander on one, correct? Yeah. They went multiple choice on one. Shouldn't they only have nine more points for 23? Yeah. You are right. That's my bad. I yeah. put the wrong That makes me there. happy. Yeah. Get the next question right and miss all of the rest. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we can get the edit. All right. So, yeah, 23 to 17. Well, here's a spin, anyways. Land on the category of 2010's fandom. Would you like to keep that or spin again? Well, we don't really want 10 points of steals, right? So, no, no. Let's spin I mean, it again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Then this will be the category. We only get five points of steals, but still. <laughs> and you land on spinner's choice. <laughs> okay. So, what do you guys feel good about? I mean, my, my choice is 80s, but, you know, what do you guys think? Tony, how do you feel about 80s? Uh, I, was, I was alive for some of it. I'm good. All right, well, I think between the three of us, we should be pretty good. Let's go for that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So then your first question in the category of 1980s. What 80s action comedy centers around a, a cop who pulls a former associate of the main villain out of prison to help catch the main villain? 48 hours. 48 hours. Yeah, 48 hours, final answer. That is correct for two points. Jeremy's our final answer person. So. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, Jake, sorry, can we get both hands on screen? Yeah, hands up. Yeah, all right. Uh, your next question. In Repo Man, before becoming a Repo Man, Otto worked at what type of establishment? I don't know this one. I don't either, guys. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah, multiple choice. <laughs> All right. So your options are A, hardware store, B, amusement park, C, grocery store, or D, bakery. It's been a long time since I've seen this one. I'm thinking, I'm thinking A, but I'm not sure. That was the first thing I, I my first inclination right. as well was hardware. Yeah. All right. We'll I go A. Though. A final answer. Is unfortunately incorrect. So brother in court for the one point steal. Is it A, hardware store? B, amusement park, C, grocery store, or D, bakery? 
I haven't seen this movie. I wish I could incept Bill Cariola's brain into mine right now. <laughs> you don't want to um, be yeah, Amusement yeah. Park came to mind for me, but I've never seen the movie. I have no oh, idea. Neither have I. Amusement Park, final answer. Uh, that is also incorrect. We are looking for a C grocery store. Okay. Okay. So your third question in 80s. What famous actor directed the 1988 crime film Colors? Sean. Um, Dennis Hopper, right? Dennis Hopper, yes. Dennis Hopper, final answer. That is correct for two points. And your penultimate question in this category. In The Untouchables, Al Capone kills an associate at a dinner table with what item? Baseball, Baseball, bat. Bat. Baseball bat. Baseball bat, final answer. Correct for two points. And the tie game. And this will be your final question in this category. Who plays Bud's love interest, Sissy, in Urban Cowboy? Um, Deborah Winger. Right. I believe so. Yeah. 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 Deborah Winger, final, final answer. And that is correct for two more points. And the lead, the score I have it coming out around number two is 25 to 23 in Grumpy Old Man's favor. Is that what you have, Mark? That's what I got. All right. So then we will get into round number three, which will work like this. It is the pick your poison round. So uh, each team will be able to draft from a predetermined list of categories. We will go back and forth drafting the categories until all of them are gone. Once we pick, take a category, the other team cannot take it for any point value. Uh, and the categories that they could choose from tonight are fandom, actors and actresses, recent releases, 1980s, 2010s, 1990s, sci-fi fantasy, and action adventure. So we'll let them pick their categories right now, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. The teams have selected their categories. Uh, we'll start with Brethren, since they are now uh, down by two points. Uh, which category would you like for your one-pointer? Which what do we feel like is our least likely to hit? I feel pretty good about all right. of them, honestly. Yeah, so I was kind of thinking sci fi fantasy first. I'd agree. Where I was okay. leaning. Um of the bunch, yeah, I'd say sci fi is probably the I'd say with you guys being the melee side more of this team, I would think yeah, let's save the other the more the other categories for the harder questions. So I think yeah, yeah let's do sci fi fantasy first. All right, so then your question in the category of sci-fi fantasy. Who directed Starship Troopers? Paul Verhoeven. Final answer. That is correct for one point. So now we will stick with you since you're still down by one point. Which category would you now like for your two-pointer? Do you want to do actors and actresses for two? I was thinking that too, honestly. Yeah. So I like it. All right. So then your question in the category of actors and actresses. Who has portrayed private investigator? Sorry, let me try that again. Who has portrayed a private investigator, a Wall Street executive, and a wheelman for hire all in the 2010s? Gosling, isn't it? What was Drive. the first? Sorry, uh, Drive, nice guys. Screen? A private investigator. Hands up, Jake. Wall Street executive, big short. Yeah, yeah. Hands up, Jake. Hands up, Jake. Hands up, Jake. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Ryan Gosling, final answer. That is correct for two points. Good job, Joe. All right. It was so, the wheel man for hire that did it, to be honest. <laughs> so now we will go over to Grumpy Old Men. Uh, which category now would you like for your one pointer? Uh, fandom, fandom, please. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Mark? Ready? It's your one pointer in fandom. How many Pevensey children are there in the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe? It's four. Four. Yeah. Four, final answer. That's correct for a point. All right. So since we're uh, still tied up and you guys have uh, more questions remaining, which question, or sorry, which category would you like now for your two pointer? That's us, right? <laughs> yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. What do you, what do you guys think? Um, you want action adventure or 80s? Because I think maybe we want to say, or 
I feel like I'm kind of equal on the three. So, Tony, which one do you feel like you're least? Yeah, I'd want? probably say least would be action adventure. Do you want to do that right. for two then? Sure. Okay. okay. All right. Here's your two point question in action adventure. What 2010s action film contains performances from Emily Blunt, Bill Paxton, and Brendan Gleeson? Edge of Tomorrow. Edge of, yeah. Yeah. Edge of Tomorrow, final answer. That's correct for two points. All right. So going back over to uh, the Brethren Court, you have recent releases and 2010s remaining. Which would you like for your three-pointer? It really just comes down to which one we think we would hit more likely because they're yeah. going to be the same difficulty. So. I mean, if you go by math, recent releases really only covers 18 months, whereas 2010s covers nine mm -hmm. years. Yeah. So, I would say save recent for four personally. Yeah. So I would say, they're more they're like probably the same a difficulty yeah. level question. Yeah. But on that, we are more likely to have seen the 2010s movies more than once. Yeah. I mean, or, or it, 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 it could be something cool. kind of kind of obscure. Mm. Um, yeah. I don't know. Very, very I, well may not be. But I would say it's more likely between the three of us. We've seen enough movies in the last 18 months to hit a four. Yeah, yeah, I would say that too. So yeah, I would say go 2010s for three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, 2010s for three. So your question in the category of the 2010s. In what 2010s film will you find a comedy troupe called The Commune? Don't think twice. Is that that? Um... Maybe that's like a pretty like Fine. even for this is pretty scary. I would use a repeat here. Yeah. Repeat the question. Yeah, All right, that is your second repeat. Your question again. In what 2010s film will you find a comedy troupe called the Commune? Because it's not it's not the only thing I can think of is like don't think twice. It's not the big sick. No, it's not. I can't think of anything else that would have like a comedy group. Nothing's gonna end yeah. for me. Yeah, that that would make sense. And like if we're wrong, I can just I'll eat the L on it. But three, go for it. Two. I'll think twice. Final answer. That is correct for three points. Good job, uh -huh. All right. So going back over to grumpy old men, which question or which again, which category would you like for your uh, three pointer? You have uh, 1990s and 1980s remaining. I'm thinking 80s, guys. Say yeah, 90s like, for four. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah, 80s. let's do 80s. All righty. Here's your three pointer in the 1980s. What drama centers around an aimless drifter who has been missing for four years? Who wanders out of the desert and must reconnect with society? Is that Paris, Texas? That's what I was thinking. I haven't seen that, so I'm going to trust you guys with that one. <laughs> was he lost in the desert before you? I mean, it's the first thing that came to mind. Five. Do you want to repeat? Let's, let's yeah. use one repeat. Yeah. Right? Just to... to uh, repeat. Yeah, repeat. Your first repeat your question again. What drama centers around an aimless drifter who has been missing for four years, who wanders out of the desert and must reconnect with society? The desert thing's throwing me a little, but there's nothing else coming to mind. I don't think it's Melvin and Howard because that's a smaller plot detail. So, well, you, you both thought it. So if you if you don't have anything better, go for it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Paris, Texas. Final answer. That is correct for three. Good job, guys. Good job, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here's the situation. We will now go over to the Brethren Court for their four-point question in the category of recent releases. If they hit it, they will send it back over to Grumpy Old Men. Uh, if they miss, Grumpy Old Men will be the winner. So your question in the category of recent releases. In Saltburn, Felix's body is found in what specific location? It's inside the house. Yeah. Right? Yeah, it's in the, it's in the maze. Yeah, it's, it's in the center of the hedge maze. You want to be very specific. It's like in the middle of the hedge maze next to like a statue. 
Yes. But I feel like they just want to. This is found in, not next to. So I think. No, it's in the center of the maze. So it's. Yeah. yeah. So you the center of the maze. Hedge maze. Final, yeah. answer. Hedge maze final answer. <laughs> that is correct for four points. Is it going to be murder on the trivia floor? <laughs> no pressure. All right. So it's been a phenomenal game. So now we will go back over to Grumpy Old Men for their four pointer in the category of the 1990s. If they hit it, uh, they will win. If they miss, the Brethren Court will be the winners. Mark? Any your question? In Casino, Sam was originally a mafia associate in which city before he was moved to Las Vegas? I know Nikki's from Chicago, but I'm not sure if that's where Sam was from. Is it Kansas it City? Was a busy question. Uh, I, I want to say it's Kansas City. Kansas City. Repeat, please. That is your second repeat your question again. In Casino, Sam was originally a mafia associate in which city before he was moved to Las Vegas? Any thoughts, Tony? Uh, I, I'm. I think it's Kansas City because I know there's there's a lot of back and forth between Kansas City and Vegas in the movie. All right. So. What do you think, Jeremy? We can use the last. Repeat. I feel like it's either that. We'll or use the last repeat. Hang on. Repeat. Yeah. All right. As your final repeat, your question once again. In Casino, Sam was originally a mafia associate in which city? Before he was moved to Las Vegas, I have no help here. So you guys talk it out. <laughs> I, I mean, I know that Sam and, and Nikki knew each other. Nikki is absolutely from Chicago, but you don't think that's where Sam was from? Uh, I, I think it's Kansas City. All right, I'm going to defer to you guys then. Yeah. All right, Kansas City right. final answer. And your winners, the Brethren Court. <laughs> With a final score of 33 to 31, uh, the correct answer we, we were looking for was unfortunately Chicago. Oh, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jeremy, uh, It's all right, guys. That's uh, all right, guys. An right. Amazing game. Uh, we will now go to post match interviews, starting with our unfortunate second place finishers tonight, Grumpy Old Men. Uh, we <laughs> we got to take out Jake, too. There we go. All right. Uh, guys, you guys, I know it was a. It was a bit of a rough uh, draw, I think, on the last question there. The, clearly, you guys were, like, around the right answer. Just couldn't quite uh, get there in the time, it seems. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, you played phenomenally. I mean, you had the lead for most of the match. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 31 points is a ridiculous score. So, uh, uh, thoughts on your performance overall? And, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's just one of those things where I, I probably could have pushed a little harder on that last one because I'm like, like I said, they – Nikki and and Sam knew each other and I know Nikki's from Chicago so maybe I could have been a little stronger on that but you know I you can't beat yourself up cuz it's like there you know it's a 3 hour movie we've all seen it there's a lot of details in it and you just you're in the spur of the moment so it's just one of those things that happens and it doesn't take away from a great match that we played I just think we all complimented each other. Great. You know, there was a moment there where, where Tony pulled a great question. I know I pulled a, a couple, you know, we did great in round two. So, uh, you know, and then it's tough when, you know, you've got three players to play against and they don't really have much weakness on the board. So I'm very proud of what we did. And I'm, I, I would be really excited to ever get a chance to play with these guys again. I have no regrets on this match. It was a great one. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah, I, I mean, that's obviously on me because I was the one pushing. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's like Chicago almost seems too easy for yeah. a four-pointer. That's true. Kind of thing. So you kind of like trick yourself into overthinking. and Because mm -hmm. I know like Kansas City is like a big and plot point in that movie, if I'm yeah. remembering it correctly. It so, um, so it sucks. But I mean – Hats off to them. They played great. I, great job. I, I don't think that – I think there's too many teams in this tournament that are, like, well-balanced where, like, yeah. there is no team that, it like, can't beat anyone. And I just so. want to get – I, I want to give them – 
great credit because they didn't get fandom and they still played an incredible match. So I, and they got a bonus choice and we got spinner's choice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. They had, a, they had a lot against them and they played yeah. amazing. So I just want to be sure I give them that credit before I forget. Yeah, I mean, I, I I thought we did a good job. You know, I just keep down to the last question. Um, you know, Tony is beating himself up about it, but at least he contributed to the conversation. I I don't know Scorsese movies. People know that, so I was no help to them at all for that. Um, but you know, I I thought we played together pretty well. And the mm -hmm. the best part of it, I think, is that we're not out of the tournament. There's a losers bracket, and now there's no pressure on us anymore. So that's true. Let's, let's, go, let's go for it. Yeah, absolutely. I think I can say for everyone here that uh, you guys in the losers bracket is absolutely terrifying. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if we if we end up seeing you guys all the way in the finals and maybe see a rematch in the end once the losers bracket meets the winners bracket. So it could be a possibility given how you, well you guys played today. So uh, congrats on a great performance. Uh, we will now put you backstage for now as we get into the interview with our first place finisher for this evening, the Brethren Court. Guys, Unreal match overall, like uh, Cody said in the private chat here, uh, probably match of the year so far. Uh, really intense. You guys kept it close uh, from the beginning uh, against a really, really strong team. You guys really had to earn it. You had to sweep all your questions in uh, round three and even you know, only went to multiple choice on one of your questions in round two, which is crazy. Just a ridiculous performance all around. Uh, so thoughts on the match overall? Uh, I I. I'm kind of stunned that that we were able to get it after a partner's choice and they got spinners. I really thought it was like we're gonna really fight, um, and and being able to win is really cool. Um, to to quote Brad Pitt when he won his Oscar, I'll, I I I will ride Jake Meltzer's coattails any day. Uh, the view from here is amazing. Uh, he played. Jake came out here and just out of out of retirement just hit a home run performance, and I think like me and Joe were able to help where we could. And that feels nice, but man, three. we're not here if Jake's not on this team. So to be fair, fair, to be fair, Kyle, you you knew the three. Which I was going to say, and we all said the answer to the four at the same time. So I think yeah. there was that. I think I'm going to take a little bit of just joy here because I think this is the only time in a melee match that I'm going to beat anyone that was above me <laughs> in this match. So I'll take it. For sure, it it was good. Uh, yeah, we managed to keep pace, and I think that was the important thing. Just keeping that pace after the opponent's choice and spinner's choice, just to keep that. And yeah, hell of a match, hell of a match. Yeah. Feels good to have been part of it. Um, I like co-host saying like he's riding my coattails. I mean, yeah, we would not be inter being interviewed second if not for him. Uh, and Joe was the one who knew the the two pointer first too. I was having trouble with that, so. I think, um, like I knew coming in, it was going to be, it was going to be an uphill battle. Like those, those guys are all like championship caliber players and, uh, in melee, like it's crazy. All three of us have won the team's title in fandom and like two of them have won the team's title in melee and just like the pedigree and the smash on either side is pretty crazy. And like to come back to this, and to immediately go into like a really tight, really amazing match, like this is why I came back. Like I had the itch to play. Like I didn't. I was tired of putting in a lot of the work, but I missed the actual playing of the game. So this was a real thrill for me. I'm really excited to keep going with these guys. Uh, whatever comes next. Well, speaking of what's coming next, uh, I can announce uh, the two potential teams that you'll be placed, you'll be facing in the next round of the tournament. And I'm excited because this is one of the only situations so far in one of these trios matches where I actually have the team names for the teams. So you'll be facing either the number uh, five seed, the German three, which is the team of Matt Quaylar, Mike Hanley, and Kirk Kowalkowski, or the number 12 seed, Protect Yannick, which is myself. Jordan Owens and Amaru Moses. So, uh, which team would you like to play out of those two? I, I'm, I'm, I'm very cool with either, but I, I want to, I've wanted to play Kirk again so badly. Uh, so, I, ho I, I will gladly play either team, but, but you know, German three would be really fun. I love a good Wu Tang reference, uh, if I'm being honest. Uh, so, 
I'm a little partial there, though. Using fandom might not be the strategy in that one. Uh, but we'll see. Like, I think they're both very evenly matched teams, and I think either would be a pretty big challenge. Uh, but Wu Tang forever. Let's go. Yeah. For me, just for the sake of variety, I will say that Dylan, I've already played you in multiplex. Oh, God. Don't remind me. And <laughs> Rue. And I've played Rue as well. So I think, yeah, I'll go with the, the German three as well, just for the sake of variety. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, uh, great game today, guys. We'll now put you backstage for now. And we'll go to. One Mr. Mark Menchaca to close this out. Uh, Mark, I thought this was an insane match, completely living up to the hype. What are your thoughts? Uh, I completely agree. I mean, we just went back and forth the entire game, and sometimes this is this is a game of inches, and it's a matter of who makes the most mistakes, and today it just happened to be grumpy old men. They just missed a question too many, and then that was the difference. And yeah, it, it was it was impressive to see at least. Uh, it was also very impressive to see Brethren Court perform, perform as well as they did, even though they were very much out of their comfort zone the entire game. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very excited to see both these teams come back. I know they say that at the end of pretty much every match we film, but uh, seriously, like these both these teams killed it today, and I'm very excited about their prospects in the future in this tournament but uh thank you all for watching this episode of movie melee thank you to the writers showrunners uh players managers even though there weren't any managers today thank you all for helping make what this league is we'll see you in the next one bye goodbye Storm in the castle. Think it'll work? Goodbye.